think we have to read out the gravitational effect of those planets. Hi, I'm Alicia, and this is NASA Now. Today we are going to go deep beneath the lunar surface to see what's at the core of the moon. We'll talk with an expert who uses seismic activity to understand the structure of the moon. That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. NASA's twin GRAIL spacecraft have set out to orbit the moon in order to gain greater knowledge of its Five, interior structure. Four, three, two, one. Zero and liftoff of the Delta II with GRAIL, on a journey to the center of the moon. GRAIL will serve as eyes on the moon for the student-run MoonCam program. MoonCam stands for Moon Knowledge Acquired by Middle Schools, and it's an educational outreach program that will allow you to take photos of the lunar surface of the moon using eight different cameras on the GRAIL spacecraft. Students will use the images to study lunar features such as craters and highlands, while also learning about future landing sites. In order to get involved with MoonCam, all you have to do is have an educator register you online at mooncam.ucsd.edu. The GRAIL MoonCam mission will begin in 2012, when the GRAIL satellites are in orbit around the moon, and the mission will last approximately 80 days. Another one of NASA's projects studying the interior of the moon focuses on analyzing moonquakes. That is, seismic activity that occurs on the moon. Joining us is Dr. Renee Weber, lunar and planetary scientist at Marshall Space Flight Center. Hello, Dr. Weber. Are moonquakes the same as earthquakes? Plate tectonics are what causes most seismic activity on the Earth. The difference between the Earth and the moon is that the moon has no plate tectonics. You can sort of think of it as a solid shell. So the seismic events recorded on the moon are a bit different from types that are recorded on the Earth. On the moon, we have three main types of seismic activity. We have impacts, which is usually meteorites that are actually impacting the surface of the moon. Another type are shallow moonquakes. They're not associated with plate boundaries, but on the moon, we don't really know what causes these, and they're relatively rare. The third type of event that's recorded on the moon is called a deep moonquake, and these are much more frequent, but they're very small. So the deep moonquakes actually are related to the tides. If you think about the moon orbiting the Earth, you have a gravitational interaction between these two bodies. That interaction is what causes tides in the Earth's ocean. And so these things come in and they go out and it has a periodicity to it. The same thing is what causes these deep moonquakes on the moon. What do you use to study activity on the moon? I look mostly at seismic data from the Apollo missions, which is sort of unique because it was the only extraterrestrial seismic data set that we have. So part of the Apollo science package included seismometers, which measure ground motion, and there were four of these instruments that were deployed between the years 1969 and 1972. And they recorded data up until 1977, and that is the data set that I analyzed. What can this data tell you about the moon? We know on Earth that we have a crust and mantle and a core. The same thing is actually true of the moon, where we have a crust and mantle and a core. But up until recently, we only knew roughly what the size of the core was, whether or not it was molten, uh, what the materials are that it's made of. So basically, there are two types of seismic energy. If you think about dropping a pebble into a pond, you watch the ripples spread out from the source. Well, the same thing is basically true of a moonquake. So if you think of a moonquake as being a point inside the moon that rumbles, it's sending energy out in spheres from the central point. So some of that energy travels directly from the moonquake up to the seismometers that sit on the surface. And likewise, some of that energy travels down. So what happens with that energy that travels down is that it reaches the core and then it actually reflects off of the core mantle boundary and travels back up to the seismic station. And we can use some knowledge of the uh, seismic structure of the moon to figure out exactly where the depth is based on the travel times of those waves to the seismic stations. 
How will your research continue? There's still a lot of questions that we need to know regarding the seismic activity on the far side of the moon. So one thing that we can do is continue to apply modern seismology processing techniques to see if we can learn more. Another thing that we can do is we can take what we've learned and try to apply it to designing new seismometers, which will hopefully fly to the moon on future lunar seismic missions. Did you know that the distance between Earth and the Moon changes constantly? That's because the Moon does not orbit Earth in a perfect circle, but instead travels in a slightly elliptical orbit. The Moon's distance from Earth varies as much as 26,000 miles, and this contributes to the stresses associated with moonquakes. Now you know. An important part of lunar exploration is mapping your destination. Check out this cool activity. You can use some of the exact same techniques as NASA engineers with Vector Addition, Math and Science at Work, Lunar Service Instrumentation. You can find it on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us next time when we go horizontal on the treadmill. And be sure to check us out on Facebook. See you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.